Today I'm going to show you how to identify an unknown organic molecule using its mass spectrum, infrared spectrum, and proton NMR. This question is taken from an IB exam paper. We cannot determine the molecular structure of a compound using only its mass spectrum. A mass spectrum can help you identify parts of the molecule and the molecular formula if the empirical formula is known. The maximum mass detected here is the relative molecular mass of the compound, and the peak belongs to what we call as the molecular ion, M+. So the relative molecular mass of X is 88. The word relative means that it's being compared to something else, in this case to an atom of carbon-12 isotope. Thus, it has no unit. It's just a number, just 88. The empirical formula is known, so in order to find the molecular formula, we have to compare the mass of the empirical formula with the mass of the molecular formula. 88 is twice of 44. Thus, the molecular formula must have twice the numbers of atoms as the empirical formula, giving us C4H8O2. To identify a certain peak in mass spectrum, we can use this table in the data booklet. We can also do it without the data booklet. Let's draw some isomers of C4H8O2. These are not all the isomers. I'm just drawing the carboxylic acid and all the esters. Each of these isomers could potentially form fragment ions that have a mass of 29. The peak at mass to charge ratio of 29 may belong to CHO+, or C2H5 plus ion. Now there is no peak at 59. Well, 88 minus 59 is 29. This means that after the molecule loses the C2H5 plus or CHO plus ions, the other fragment produced has no charge and therefore cannot be detected by the mass spectrometer. Well, as a mass spectrum tells us parts of a molecule, an infrared spectrum tells us the functional groups. From the data booklet, we know that there is a carbonyl C11 O group in the molecule, which is consistent with the molecular formula and the mass spectrum peak of 29 that we saw previously. If we look at the spectrum again, we see that it's missing the carboxylic acid peak at 2500 to 3000 and the alcohol peak at 3200 to 3600. So let's eliminate the isotopes that we drew earlier that do not match the IR spectrum, which are the carboxylic acids. Now the proton NMR tells us the number of different hydrogen environment and how many hydrogens are on the adjacent carbon atoms. The number of peaks represent the different hydrogen environment. The chemical shift tells us how close to electronegative atoms the hydrogen is and, and the relative peak area represents the ratio of the number of hydrogen atoms in different environments. Let's now compare the two possible isomers that we have left against the chemical shift data. Both of these molecules have three hydrogen environments. The peak at 2.0 ppm belongs to the CH bonds next to a carbonyl group. The isomer on the top should give a relative peak area of 2 since there are 2 hydrogen atoms on that carbon. The isomer at the bottom should give 3 
So this unknown compound is more likely to be the isomer at the bottom. But let's check the other peak. The peak at 4.1 ppm, slightly more downfield or more shielded, belongs to the CH bonds next to an ester group. The top isomer should have a relative peak area of 3, while the bottom one, 2. So that pretty much confirms that our unknown is actually the bottom isomer. And we expect the last peak to show up at 0 0.9 to 1 ppm, having a relative peak area of 3. Now to learn more about the terms downfield or shielded, upfield and de-shielded, I have included a link in the description. Uh, it's not my video, but it's a great video to describe all these terms so that you would understand proton NMR better. Stay tuned for another video on instrumental analysis. Thank you for watching. You did great. Leave a message if you have further questions or suggestions. And please like, subscribe, and share if this video has been useful to you. Thank you.